That was great. <laughs> Welcome back to Every Disney Movie Ever. My name is Jess and I'm watching Every Disney Movie Ever. Today I'm going to talk about Something Wicked This Way Comes. Something Wicked This Way Comes is a 1983 theatrical release. It is directed by Jack Clayton, cinematography by Stephen H. Burham, editing by Barry Mark Gordon and Argyle Nelson. Its music is by James Horner and it's written by Ray Bradbury and John Mortimer based off a book of the same name by Ray Bradbury. Jack Clayton is best known for Room at the Top, Screen 2, and The Great Gatsby. Stephen H. Burham is best known for The Untouchables, The War of the Roses, Mission Impossible, and Mission to Mars. Barry Mark Gordon is best known for Cagney and Lacey in this. Argyle Nelson is best known for Night of the Juggler, Get Smart, Buddy Buddy, and Sextet. James Horner is best known for Titanic, Avatar, Deep Impact, and The Mask of Zorro. Ray Bradbury is best known for Fahrenheit 451, The Ray Bradbury Theater, Moby Dick, and this. John Mortimer is best known for John and Mary, and Bunny Lake is Missing. The film stars Vidal Peterson, Sean Carson, Jason Robards, and Jonathan Price. Vidal Peterson plays Will Holloway, and he's best known for Star Trek Deep Space Nine, Mork and Mindy, The Thornbirds, and this. Sean Carson plays Jim Nightshade, and he's best known for The Fun House, Cry for the Strangers, and this. Jason Robards plays Charles Holloway, and he's best known for All the President's Men, Magnolia, Once Upon a Time in the West, and Julia. Jonathan Price plays Mr. Dark, and he's best known for Tomorrow Never Dies, Glen Gary, Glen Ross, Pirates of the Caribbean, The Curse of the Black Pearl, and Brazil. Something Wicked This Way Comes is about an evil carnival that comes to Greentown, Illinois, and two boys see too much. Ray Bradbury got the idea from Macbeth, the line by the pricking of my thumbs, Something Wicked This Way Comes. He wrote the screenplay before he wrote the novel. He could not get it made, so he wrote the novel, and that became very famous. And then in seven Paramount bought the rights and Steven Spielberg showed interest in making the film but then eventually Disney bought the rights and had Bradbury write an entirely new script. Clayton and Bradbury wanted to stay as close to the novel as possible but Disney wanted it to be a bit more family friendly. Clayton and Bradbury also had a huge falling out during production because Clayton hired John Mortimer to do an uncredited writing pass at the script. At the director's cut screening the studio was so disappointed they fired the original editor, Argyle Nelson, and they scrapped the original score. They spent $5 million reshooting, re-editing, and rescoring the film. The original score was composed by George Della Rue, and it was deemed too dark, so they brought in James Horner. Argyle Nelson was the original editor, and when he was fired, Barry Mark Gordon was going to go with him, but Nelson encouraged him to stay and do the work on the film. The new reshoots were directed by Leo Dyer. There was a prologue added that was narrated by Arthur Hill, and they cut out a giant animated sequence that would have been a really big deal in the CGI community. The reshoots are actually quite obvious in this film because the boys are visibly older. They look older. One of the scenes is the tarantula scene where they used 200 real tarantulas. This is the last film to have Walt Disney Productions. It will become Walt Disney Pictures. The film wasn't received super well. It has a 58% on Rotten Tomatoes, and it made $8.4 million in the box office against a $19 million budget. Roger Ebert actually quite liked the film, and Ray Bradbury said it wasn't a great film, but a decently nice one. I had never seen this movie before, and literally everyone told me it was scary. It wasn't as scary as I was expecting, but it's definitely creepy. It gave me the heebie-jeebies. James Horner's score is incredible. I would give anything to hear George Delarue's score though, because apparently that was too dark. James Horner's is scary and dark, so I would love to hear the original score just to see how scary and dark that is. The lighting in this film is extraordinary. Just the different lighting filters and effects. It is so good. I was tweaking. I probably have 500 million screenshots of all the different lighting. I thoroughly enjoyed this film. I have nothing else to say about it because it was entertaining. It creeped me out. I had a great time. I definitely highly recommend it, especially right now during spooky time. So our total movie count is... Parents, that's so and cry count are still the same. If you want to keep up with what movie I'm watching when, follow me on Instagram or Twitter and you will find out what movie I'm watching when. I put up videos every Monday and Friday. What are you going to be for Halloween? Let me know down in the comments. I want to see. Also, I forgot to mention it in the last video. I did create a Facebook page for my YouTube channel. If you have any interest in Facebook and want me to have a Facebook page, I have one now. It's linked down in the description. You can follow it if you want. By all means, live your life. It's you. Remember. Until next time, comment, like, subscribe, but I'm in charge of you are, so you do, and don't be Mr. Dark about it. What are you going to be for Halloween? I'm going to be in Los Angeles for Halloween, so. I just dabbed.